Hello guys, welcome to the video Spring Enable Web Security Explained. I am Nam Haming at Code Java.net. In this video, I'd love to uh, explain the meaning, the syntax, the uses, uh, purpose of using the Enable Web Security annotation in the Spring framework with Spring Security. So you know. We add this annotation enable web security to a configuration class to enable security for Java web application built on Spring Framework and Spring Security. And Spring Security will implement some basic security configurations to protect resource access, such as create authentication manager builder bin, create authentication builder bin, create Spring Security filter chain, and so on. And this annotation can be used only at class level. The enable web security annotation is available for use if one of the following starter dependencies is present in the Spring Boot project, such as Spring Boot Starter Security, Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Authorization Server, Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Resource Server, Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Client, or any dependencies that depend on Spring Security. And this is an example of using uh, the enable web security annotation in a Spring uh, Boot project. And you can see uh, we use enable web security annotation in a configuration class. Yeah, this is uh, the application security configuration class. And you can see it uh, configures various aspects of HTTP security, security filter chain, authentication manager, authentication provider, user details service, password encoder, and so on. So basically using this uh, annotation uh, to enable web security for the bring uh, web application. And uh, let me dive deeper into this annotation, annotation to see uh, uh, what it does behind the scenes. Okay, so this is a source code of the enable web security annotation. You can see it has only uh, one attribute debug of type boolean before it's uh, false. And you can see it uh, imports uh, some configuration classes here. The first one is web security configuration class. And you can see this uh, configuration class performs the web-based security for Spring security. Then uh, it exports the necessary bins. You see. You see it exposes some bins here. You see. And uh, the most important thing in this uh, web security configuration class is that it uh, exposed a Spring security filter chain, filter, uptime filter here, and you can see it. Then it configure a default authorization, yeah, uh, require authentication for any request, here you see, and uh, configure defaults for form login and HTTP basic authentication. You see, and as a beans, you see. So, uh, if you want to understand the uh, inner working of the enable web security annotation, uh, view its uh, source code, and you will be able to understand. And you can see it uh, says that in the document here, customizations can be made to web security by implementing web security configurer and exposing it as the configuration or uh, exposing a web security customizer okay and the second uh, class that is imported by the enable web security annotation is Spring web mvc import selector and you can see it says that this class is used by Enable Web Security to conditionally import Web MVC security configuration when the dispatcher service is present on the class path. 
you can see if uh, this batcher service is uh, present in the class path then it import this web mvc security configuration class and uh, let's see what this class uh, does here you can see it uh, configures argument resolvers application context bin definition registry post processor Handler mapping, introspector, composite filter chain proxy. Okay, and uh, much more. Create do filter, delegate filter chain proxy. Okay, so this is a web MVC security configuration. And the third class that is imported by the enable web security annotation is auth to import selector. You see and it checks the presence of some OAuth 2 libraries here for example if OAuth 2 clan registration is present then it imports the secret the OAuth 2 clan configuration here you see you see it configures OAuth 2 uh, various aspects of OAuth 2 security and so on and the next class the last class that is imported by the enable web security annotation, annotation is HTTP security configuration you see this class uh, exposes HTTP security bin you can see uh, the bin HTTP security here and you can see it configure various aspects of HTTP security such as CSRF, um, uh, web async manager integration filter, exception handling, headers, session management, security context, request catch, and so on. Okay, you see. So very detailed uh, code here. So you forgot some understanding about the uh, inner working of the enable web security annotation it also it is also uh, of type enable global authentication yeah you see is this here macro interface and it imports the authentication configuration uh, annotation you see exports the authentication configuration you can see here authentication manager authentication manager delegate okay and so on so to understand the, uh, what the enable web security engine does behind the scene you can uh, hold the control key and click the mouse on the glass here okay and note that you must use this annotation in a non spring boot project to enable web security in a spring boot project using this annotation is optional because uh, spring security auto configuration will end up used behind the scenes that's why you see the security of those spring boot application works regardless of you use this annotation or not let me show you why so you see this here spring boot application and using the enable web security annotation here is optional it's not a mandatory let me show you why uh, okay in this main class and in the spring boot application annotation i exclude the security auto configuration class auto configuration class that class to see its code okay you see enable auto configuration for spring security and you can see it uh, imports spring boots web security configuration class and in this class you can see it uh, 
if she is the enable web security engine in the in a in a class named as web security enabler configuration you see so uh, that means the um, subring security auto configuration uh, and stop using the enable web security annotation here yeah, that's why uh, using uh, the enable web security annotation in a configuration class uh, like this uh, is not mandatory is the option uh, you can use or not mm, and uh, the security of the web application works regardless of the presence of this uh, annotation make sense and the enable web security annotation has only one attribute named debug which is a boolean tag and the default value is false if enabled, it will bring uh, debugging information about subring security in the console. Okay, you can see the attribute debug of type boolean here and has default value, default forced value here. Controls debugging support for subring security. Okay, let me test by specify debug equal to here and then start the this application. Okay, start this application. And you can see it says in the console here, security debugging is enabled. This may include sensitive information. Do not use in a production system. So use the debug uh, attribute equal to here yeah, if you want to debug uh, deep, uh, uh, about supporting security. Okay, so that's my explanation about Subring's Enable Web Security Annotation. I hope you've uh, got some uh, good understanding about uh, this uh, annotation in the Subring Framework and Subring Security. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share this video. Thanks for watching.